In part four of our presentation on therapeutic applications of light, we'll be looking at uh, the clinical validation that's been obtained uh, in regards with the um, light modulation technique used in the sensora and the sensosphere. Now, with these instruments, we've been observing um, a whole range of effects uh, going from deep and profound relaxation to spontaneously arising meditative-like states, even for people with no experience, prior experience of meditation. And um, many uh, effects which are very helpful therapeutically to assist uh, therapists in, in working with various uh, um, um, psychological issues such as depression or um, post-traumatic stress syndrome or chronic pain management and so on. Now there's no a clear and simple explanation as to why using light in this way would have such effects. We, we only have uh, hints indicating why that could be. So let's look at some of those. One way to look at this is through the, uh, the effects of light on our brain, on the neurotransmitters um, equilibrium balance in the brain. So of course uh, uh, light and sense has a major impact on our sensory input. And um, the fact that we perceive light as something potentially very beautiful, if, if you think uh, of the rainbow, if you think of pure colors, it, it generates a very pleasant uh, sensation, energizing and, and joyful if the light is uh, presented in, in the appropriate way as it is in sensora, sensosphere. And Whenever we feel such a uh, pleasant sensation, it's associated with um, catecholaminergic neurotransmitters in the brain. Um, and these are associated with uh, um, all kinds of uh, pleasant states. So the main ones, of course, are noradrenaline and dopamine. And um, this also affects endorphins, another class of uh, neurotransmitters involved in, in well-being feelings. So whenever you can create a sensory stimulus that um, generates, um, restores that kind of um, neurotransmitter flow, you will contribute to a restoration of the homeostasis in the body, the uh, uh, feeling of well-being and uh, um, balance that's essential for mental health. In more fundamentally, um, in relation with the effects of pure colors on uh, the brain. Uh, I was struck uh, early on by uh, an extremely interesting experience that, that uh, took place in 89. It was one of the first experiences using scanners. Uh, and it was uh, using a PET scan to try to identify which centers in the brain are responsible for processing color, uh, color vision. And uh, what they did is expose people to uh, patterns of light uh, some patterns were chromatic with uh, blotches of pure colors and some patterns uh, were similar but without the colors, black and white, achromatic patterns. What they observed is that, um, of course, the colorful patterns would excite the um, color uh, processing areas in the brain which they were able to identify through this process. And this is in the occipital region in the brain, in, in the back of the brain. And you can see here so the, the black lines correspond to the chromatic, the colorful pattern. And um, this is the color area of the brain, of course, stimulated by these colorful patterns. But now if you look <coughs> at the frontal um, uh, cortex, which is really uh, more connected to our mind, mental activity and, and uh, mental processing, you can see that the colorful pattern has actually suppressed um, frontal cortex activity. So what you have here is a situation where you have certainly lots of energy flowing in the brain, highly stimulated uh, cortical regions there, but at the same time you have relaxed and suppressed uh, thought and mental activity. And in other words, it's very similar to what you, you, how you would define uh, meditation, because it's a state of attention, so um, you, you're being kept awake by this energizing process, but at the same time the mind is at rest. So we can see how pure colors um, contribute to that uh, inner state, that beneficial inner state. 
A good question that we asked um, early on was whether the effects we were observing were mediated primarily through the visual optic pathway or the non-visual optic pathway. As you may remember in our first, uh, um, first parts of this presentation, we saw how the non-visual optic pathway uh, connects vision with the hypothalamus and acts on our hormonal balance, our inner balance. Now, what we know about uh, non-visual optic pathway activation is that it requires a couple of things. It requires first the sustained stimulation. The, the melanopsin response, uh, um, the, the sensors in the eye which are in that uh, connected to that non-visual optic pathway, respond very slowly. You need uh, a stimulus for over one minute. And you also need relatively high intensities to um, trigger that system because, of course, it has to be triggered by daylight. Th that's how it's been, it's evolved um, over uh, uh, billions of years. So here you see in this graph how um, you need uh, quite a substantial uh, luminosity to actively suppress melatonin, which is a good symptom of the action of this non-visual pathway. So low levels of light will not have much action. And you also need uh, a good uh, 20 minutes um, uh, exposure normally to, um, to have significant action on, on the uh, um, non-visual optic pathway. Uh, and this is actually quite different from what we're doing with uh, the sensora or the sensosphere because we, we work with very low light levels, typically between 20 and 60 lux. So uh, pretty much below the threshold observed in those uh, non-optic, um, opt uh, non-visual optic pathway, which leads me to conclude that they're more likely uh, uh, mediated through the visual optic pathway. So they're really related more to the visual system, and um, in a way, it's, it means that a lot of the research currently ongoing, which focuses on the uh, non-visual uh, optic pathway and the effect on uh, hormonal balance. Uh, doesn't have that much to tell us about what we are working with here. And much more research is needed to understand better how these pure colors affect our mind and our um, uh, inner um, state. An interesting development uh, uh, regarding this question is that, in fact, there is constant interaction between the uh, visual and non-visual optic pathway. There's an interesting experiment that was uh, performed um, fairly recently that shows how um, after about 20 minutes you can visualize that uh, um, non-visual optic pathway stimulation will gradually spread throughout the brain from the hypothalamus out to the outer regions uh, of the cortex. So in fact, uh, um, as we could um, uh, guess, there is uh, these are global phenomena that propagate through the whole brain. So there is no simple and obvious way to explain uh, this kind of perceptual phenomena that we are dealing with. said, it's all of course uh, um, essential to keep on um, performing research in the field. And um, we were fortunate enough to have, in, uh, fairly recently in tw uh, 2013, a clinical study made on the light modulation technique as used in the, the sensor and sensosphere. This was done in the Advances in Mind-Body Medicine Journal and uh, it was done by uh, Mary Ross, uh, um, a doctor in the US. And it was done 117 subjects um, in two locations, in, in one in Texas and one in uh, Quebec here in, in, in Canada. And it was testing um, three light programs uh, with the main mood light themes that we are working with, the relaxing, energizing, and balancing mood light themes. And in addition, a fourth program, which was uh, uh, taken as a placebo and which was simply white light uh, with equivalent luminosity as the um, colored programs. And uh, the study used a variety of measurement techniques, both physiological and psychological, to try to evaluate the impact of this light on the autonomous nervous system. Um, the results showed uh, a number of um, interesting things. You can see here on these graphs, the black line correspond to the placebo, whereas the colored line correspond to the, uh, the our three colored um, light programs. And you can see in, in measures such as skin conductance or uh, uh, mean heart rate that um, the, the colored program uh, 
um, reduced heart rate more than the placebo did. So um, while they all contributed to relaxation, the colored program um, worked uh, in a deeper way. You could also see that here the um, uh, energizing program, the red line, while contributing to relaxation as uh, all the other lab programs did, uh, did so to a lesser extent. So this is consistent with uh, a higher energy in the, um, the experience. Uh, some other physiological measurement uh, uh, results here based on heart rate variability um, showed that, um, again, clear differentiation between the white light and the, the colored patterns. And in general, they um, indicated a higher level of well-being and coherence uh, obtained from the colored light um, patterns. The component, the very low frequency VLF component of heart rate variability is used uh, to um, indicate, it's uh, considered to be linked to an ar arousal of the sympathetic autonomic nervous system, which corresponds to uh, higher wakefulness and alertness. And uh, so we can see here that the uh, colored light programs had, were linked to increased alertness and wakefulness in compared to the placebo. Uh, the uh, psychological tests, again, showed clear differentiation between the um, placebo and our colored light test. We have here a test showing what's called mood disturbance, um, anger, um, depression, fatigue, all these effects. And the index is much more reduced, significantly reduced with the, the um, light modulation programs, whereas there is no significant effect on the with the placebo program. So the conclusion of the, the study was that, um, quite interestingly, these light modulation programs had a dual effect. They both um, achieved a state of deep relaxation together with an enhanced alertness and wakefulness. And again, this is indicative of this uh, um, state uh, similar to meditation, where you have those two aspects. It, it's linked to peak performance potential and so on. So it, it's, um, it shows how this type of light um, supports this harmonized um, and energized feeling. And that in itself uh, can certainly um, indicate how that would be helpful therapeutically. Uh, 